If I were to tell you that the cycles of the sun can affect your whole life, you might think that suddenly I'm moving away from astronomy and into astrology. We are more interested in the beauty of space and the mechanisms that explain why it is the way it is. But sometimes, even the most amazing stories have a grain of truth behind them. I'm no expert on horoscopes, but based on the current state of the sun, I predict that in the next few years, you'll have worse health, rely less on technology, see less cloudy and warmer weather, and possibly be affected in other surprising ways. How do I know? Because it turns out that the sun, the giant fireball in the sky, is not just the place where we get our energy. Science is beginning to show that its 11-year cycles can be a metronome that measures how life on our planet is progressing. Today, we look at the sun cycles. In particular, we will consider how the sun cycles affect the course of our lives. It's no surprise that the sun has an impact on life on Earth. After all, in many ways it is the source of life. Life on Earth needs energy to function, and the sun often provides this energy. Light for plants, plants for herbivores, herbivores for carnivores, all the way up the food chain. It is difficult to find anything on Earth that could survive without the sun. But beyond the gift of this life-sustaining energy, it is easy to think of the sun as quite static. We see it rise and fall in the sky, but we rarely notice it undergoing any change. This is an illusion. The sun is always changing. As science progressed and we were able to block out the sun's worst glare, it became possible to study its surface. And as early as 1610, it became clear that the sun is a boiling, shifting sea of plasma, barely contained and often untrammeled. Despite the intense gravity that holds everything together, the nuclear reactions taking place in its core are so hot that they reach 15 million degrees in its center. The plasma bubbles up on its surface and explodes into solar flares that flare in all directions. Sunspots form, drift, and disappear as dark patches on the sun's surface, filled with intense magnetic fields and can be between 1,600 and 160,000 kilometers wide. Coronal mass ejections erupt from the sun's corona. The atmospheric region above the sun is strangely 200 times hotter than the surface. It is hard to find a place in the solar system as active as the sun. What many people don't realize is that this activity waxes and wanes. The sun operates on an 11-year cycle that goes from a period of low activity to a much higher level and back again. Sunspots, solar flares and coronal mass ejections all become more common during solar maximum. Solar maxima are periods when the sun is at a higher level of activity. You are 50 times more likely to see a solar flare during solar maximum than during solar minimum. Coronal mass ejections go from happening every few days to happening more than once in a single day. This is known as the Schwabe cycle. Every 11 years, the sun's magnetic north and south poles shift. When another Schwabe cycle occurs, the poles switch again. This constant rise and fall in solar energy levels moves through our planetary system, ebbing and flowing like a heartbeat. And surprisingly, Although we cannot see it, we here on Earth move to its rhythm. We don't really understand why the Sun goes through this cycle. Clearly, it has something to do with the magnetic processes that exist within the Sun itself. Yet despite observing these cycles for the last 200 years and seeing evidence of the effects on Earth for the last 10,000 years, we are still no closer to understanding why the Sun's cycle has such a long time span than others. What force drives it? Finding no other obvious answer, some scientists have tried to link the length of Jupiter's orbit to the length of this cycle. This is again about 11 years. But this convenience may also be a coincidence. Although Jupiter represents two and a half times the mass of the other planets in the solar system combined, 
and certainly has some gravitational pull on the Sun, its orbit cannot explain the variations in the Sun cycle. Much of what happens inside the Sun is a mystery to us, but its effect on Earth is much easier to see. It all starts with the space around us. Space is becoming more and more important to modern civilization. So it should come as no surprise that the more regular coronal mass ejections and solar storms from the Sun have an impact on the technology we have out there. Scientists can predict days or even weeks in advance when a solar storm, known as a geomagnetic storm, will reach Earth. This allows astronauts to enter safe shelters to protect themselves from harmful spikes in radiation levels and also allows sensitive hardware on satellites to be powered down to prevent frying. This is important because solar radiation can cause unexpected electrical currents in cables and overload systems that have not been put into a safe standby mode. But there is another aspect of geomagnetic storms that you might not expect. All this radiation has an effect on the atmosphere itself. It warms it a little bit. As the atmosphere heats up, it expands. And that has an effect on our satellites. There is no friction in space, so objects can stay in orbit almost indefinitely. This is not exactly true, and satellites in low Earth orbit sometimes have to spend fuel to correct their orbits about four times a year because there is very little atmosphere there. But when a geomagnetic storm occurs, the atmosphere blooms upwards and LEO satellites have to maneuver every two to three weeks to avoid falling from the sudden friction. And this is not always enough. In 1989, there was a geomagnetic storm so strong that the NASA Solar Maximum mission fell out of the sky because the increase in the atmosphere suddenly slowed the satellite down. Ironically, it was studying solar flares this is not an isolated incident. After every geomagnetic storm, NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, has to relocate hundreds of satellites from their old orbits. Radiation can also affect our ionosphere, filling it with charged plasma. This can create a slight lensing effect on our GPS systems, reducing their accuracy from 1 to 10 meters. The next time Google Maps thinks you might be a block away from where you are, a geomagnetic storm could be to blame. Every 11 years, our power grids prepare themselves to protect themselves from overloading against the increase in events that cause this current. Amateur radio enthusiasts and airline pilots notice that high-frequency radio ranges are significantly reduced as radio waves are deflected or even completely blocked by the stronger ionosphere. As I predicted in my horoscope, all this means less reliable technology. The next solar maximum is at 2025. The fact that it is expected to happen soon makes me quite confident in my predictions. There are some good sides to this. As space weather becomes more turbulent, parts of the world, such as Canada, are seeing an increase in the number of auras dancing hypnotically in the sky. Aura hunters report aurora sightings up to twice a month, up from several times a year during the most energetic periods of the sun's 11-year cycle. So much for the sun's influence on space and our technology. We might think this is the end. The sun cycle can affect machines, but it won't make much difference to anything alive. If you think that, you're wrong. There is growing evidence that the sun cycles can affect ecosystems and even species themselves. That includes humans. Some of this is coincidental. When the Schwabe cycle is at solar minimum, the sun exerts less pressure through its solar winds. This ironically means that we are less protected from cosmic radiation from our heliosphere. This type of radiation is highly energetic. But fortunately, it rarely reaches our atmosphere for this very reason. Because it is likely to be absorbed or deflected by a passing air molecule. But all it needs to have an effect is to reach the atmosphere. There is a theory, though not a certainty, 
that this extra radiation can create nucleation sites in the atmosphere, creating extra clouds and affecting our weather. Even if this doesn't happen, the space air hitting our atmosphere when the sun is at maximum could raise global temperatures slightly. A warming of the air, as predicted by our initial horoscope, not too much, less than half a degree. And the temperature always eventually returns to where it started. But for species that pay attention to temperature, it's enough to be noticeable. To decide when the mating season starts, for example. Studies on birds have shown that they tend to lay eggs earlier in warmer years. Interestingly, a study published in 2009 by researchers in the Netherlands went so far as to show that egg-laying times are also influenced by the number of solar monkeys that occur. A study of about a third of Dutch women in 2011, spanning 20 years, found that there was a peak in six cervical pathologies just after the solar maximum, when the sun's radiation is at its highest. The same study also checked one man during the same period, which admittedly means a much smaller number of candidates. Nevertheless, it is interesting to note that men also experience slight elevations in oral temperature, pulse rate, blood pressure, and respiratory rate that occurred immediately after solar maximum. It has an impact not only on the physical, but even on the rate of mental disorders. If this is the case, the solar cycle at the moment of our birth may have influenced the whole course of your life. Not exactly star signs, but astrology may be on to something, at least with a particular star. As a result, scientific studies on this subject are still ongoing, and it is emphasized that any health effects caused by these cycles are extremely small. As one researcher noted, it took hundreds and thousands of patients to even realize that there was an effect on health. The cycles of the sun should not prevent you from living your life. We are currently heading towards a solar maximum which is predicted to reach in 2025. But for those who are worried, living or being born at a solar maximum is not so bad. The same study suggested that this radiation could also lead to an increase in creativity and adaptability. Perhaps it was during such a solar cycle 80,000 years ago that the human brain first mutated to give us abstract thought and consciousness. If so, we have a lot to thank solar maxima for if they give us a sense of the universe. Without them, there would be no us. The sun may have given you a mind to think abstractly, but unfortunately, learning the facts and skills to fill that mind is not beamed to us from above. Learning can take a lifetime, but is there any way to avoid these solar flares? If there is, that's another topic for Deuce TV. See you in the next video.